So hey everyone, I'm Tiffany and welcome back. Leisha Barnett, my friend, my colleague, my sister is teaching today on Bardot, which I say wrong. I say it like <laughs> Tarot. And uh, so don't follow me. <laughs> Absolutely. Bridget Bardot. <laughs> Bardot. I don't know why. Which is my bang inspo, by the way. Bridget Bardot. Oh, okay, anyway. oh perfect. <laughs> And so I'm really excited because we're we're doing this class in October of 2023, and um, it's definitely you know um, kind of a zoom out approach, but it it falls in naturally with some other content that's going on on the podcast, which is just this fun Halloween special. So we've got um, Lisa Williams has been on teaching about afterlife answers. Tani Lewis has been on teaching about paranormal uh, Halloween. We've had Abby Lynn has been on teaching about um, dimensional, extra dimensional creatures and beings. Uh, we've got other people coming to do Celtic Samhain and Halloween from different perspectives, pumpkin growers, all kinds of fun, good stuff. And so uh, Bar Bardo, Bardo, Bardo is one of those topics that fits in because it's about the afterlife realm. And so welcome, Leisha. Uh, I can't wait to hear and learn from you as always. And I'll manage the chat for you. And just um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Tiff. I am excited to talk about this. I um, am not an expert in the Bardo process at all. However, being the investigator, <laughs> human design that I am, I have dived deep for not like being certified in Bardo kind of thing. Um, because two years ago, my mom transitioned and I wanted the information for that process because this is about the correct dying process. So that's kind of what we're going to be talking about. Now, I want to say, and Tiffany and I have kind of pre-discussed a lot of this, um, some of this might be like kind of a little bit of a, a challenge or like might be like, wait, I need to reorganize for a minute of what we believe uh, or what we already kind of have in our mind of how dying and the afterlife and kind of that process works. So just naming that um, and even communicating with spirits and things, it might be like a slight adjustment to that. And that's where I'm excited to like have Tiffany kind of add that in with her experience and gifts in that area. So um, for, for the beings that have left this earthly plane in our lives, right? Um, and so this is just kind of an invitation before we get into the, the subject matter to just receive it and kind of absorb it and um, allow the information in because of course we cannot be certain about any of that, even, I mean, any of this, you know, this is just, the, this is the information the human design system shares with you know with us the knowledge about the death and dying process and kind of how the reincarnating and all of that works um so we can hear this we can kind of just hear from those who have experienced it i'm going to share my experience i'm going to share some others that i've uh you know specifically one other that i was inspired by her sharing and her experience with it um and then just choose for ourselves or not right so that's kind of the whole i just wanted to do a little pre load of that um, concept. Just kind of let it wash in <laughs> and see what it can show us. Um, okay, so we are talking about Bardo and I I like Bardo too, because it's like very mwah, French, like we oui, oui. So I'm down for however you say it. Um, and like I said, Bridget Bardo is my bangs inspiration. The So just say, feel free to look up her bangs. They're so good. Okay. <laughs> So getting into human design, Bardo, um, I love this image and I'll show it again, but it's kind of that, you know, there's someone obviously on the, on the, their kind of their deathbed in their transition, there's someone tending to, and then here you sort of see this, you know, non-physical being. Now there's a lot of way to interpret that, but just to say there's these ancient, all of these ancient systems have some things in common with what they say about the death and dying process. So <clears throat> I just love this image to kind of kick us off. Okay. So Bardo, what is it? Like, let's just start with like, what are we talking about here? Um, I hadn't heard that term before human design. However, now I'm aware that it there, it's a whole lot of, it's like a whole thing. Um, in Tibetan Buddhism is I have a friend who's very, uh, versed and experienced in that and now I'm like oh okay this is like a bigger thing than just human design because I learned about it with human design so bardo you know just kind of that concept is the state of existence 
intermediate between two lives on earth, right? So between incarnate, between incarnate incarnations, we, there's, you know, a process of dying and that life ending, whatever happens there. And then the next, you know, the next incarnation where we have a form again, like what is, what is all that? So it's kind of that whole process. Um, according to Tibetan tradition after death and before one's next birth, again, those, you know, that kind of like liminal space, when one's consciousness is not connected with a physical body, one experiences a variety of phenomena not only in the exiting of this life, but you know, the entering of the next. Now we're talking about the exiting here. Um, so for the prepared and appropriately trained individuals, this is all from Wikipedia, just when you look up Bardo, right? Now I'm saying it, Bardo. Um, the Bardo offers a state of great opportunity for liberation since transcendent, transcendental insight may arise with the direct experience of reality. So we lived the life, now there's this transcendental, like if we're aware and know of this process and choose that or not, if we have a choice, and we'll get into that. Um, there's a way that that can be, you know, that can be a transcendent experience for that life. So we'll continue to get into this. For others, it can be a place of danger as the karmically created hallucination, hallucinations can impel one into a less than desirable rebirth because the traumas and the journey that that's that our souls came into this life to process and alchemize and experience and choose purposefully all the pain, all the things, right? All the experiences. If we are not able to alchemize that and learn the lessons that we are meant to learn and that our soul chose, you know, for this life, then we carry those into the next life. And so then we kind of, we've got to relive the thing. Now we don't have this memory of all these, you know, of all these previous lives necessarily. And we know there's different ways you can potentially access some of that. The way my friend says it, who is in the Tibetan Buddhism and human design, he says, it's like, you know, um, I lost my train of thought. Yeah. So basically like you choose the next one. Oh, there's a, there's an atmospheric layer around the earth that wipes like the memory clean from that. As soon as our, our forms, like as soon as we are personality crystal and design crystal separate, which is like form and spirit separate at death. It's like, it wipes out kind of, as soon as it comes back in, there's an atmospheric layer around the earth that wipes out all those previous memories. So anyway, just to kind of throw that little tidbit in there. I'm like, oh, that's a whole, like, whoo, we could go into a lot of whole thing. Um, and he calls it the oversoul. The oversoul is that one that like has different forms in different lives, but it's that, you know, that spirit and in the human design, that's the personality crystal. That's our personality crystal. So in you, in your chart, if you look at your chart, I'll just kind of just orient us for a second. If you look in your chart, um, okay, there we go. You know, this, this is the design crystal imprinting. This is the personality crystal imprinting and the design and personality are what come together in this binary consciousness, you know, that we are now in. So I just want to kind of, you know, orient us to that concept. Okay. So, so this is an Alex Gray. I love Alex Gray since for decades. Um, but this is Bardo being by Alex Gray. So it's almost like one life is ending, you know, and then another life beginning. It is one of the things in human design brings a possibility for not just correctness in the way we live, right? By knowing our operating um, system and our strategy and authority and kind of beginning our experiment and seeing what we can see and deconditioning and all the things, but also continuity in terms of correctness in which we leave this plane in how we die. There's a correct dying as well there are two ways we can leave the plane we can leave correctly or not and it makes a huge difference um so i just kind of want to foundationally <laughs> point that point to that so <clears throat> looking at human design we're going to start to get into like what does this mean what is human design telling us about this process <sighs> nice tiff i like bridget Burt <laughs> picture there there's and she has different versions of things so <clears throat> But I always look up her picture for my hairstyles. I'm like, this is what I want. Okay, so every four hexagrams, hexagrams are the gates. So if you'll see here, I mean, it's a tiny image because it's the big, it's kind of the biggest I could make for the slide. But here are the gates right here in the rave mandala. Okay, so like, for example, I'm gate 26. 
which is this one right here. So I'm a Sagittarius, right? That's my personality sun. It's whatever your personality sun, that's your, that's your gate. And that's your astrological sign as well. Now you can see there's also a, um, a Godhead. So for every four hexagrams, you see there's four gates here. There's a Godhead. Um, and that my Godhead is Prometheus, which you can go and like, let me just look up Prometheus and do my little research on that. Like, what is the symbolism? What is the messaging? What is the, the role and characteristics and qualities of that? Because that's where, what, that's the personality crystal consciousness that my personality crystal belongs to. So when I die from this life, my person, if I'm, get, if I'm able to have the correct dying Bardo process, my personality crystal will go back to the Prometheus Godhead bundle of personality crystals like that consciousness okay so um millions of personality crystals make up each godhead so whoever so tiffany you have gate um one i think in yours so you're hades hades is your godhead okay so it's like look we know the you know we know certain things about hades but what is actually behind that so that's an interesting kind of piece you can take it's whatever gate your personality sun is in find it on the wheel you can find these images, you can look up, you know, or you can take a screenshot, whatever you want to do here um, <clears throat> and see just what messaging, what is, what is that? Because that's beyond just even this life. Like that's your, your like consciousness that you're coming in with. Um, okay. So at the center of the earth within the mantle of the earth is the design crystal bundle. Like that's the form. That's like the earth, like the physical, like my body is made of earth. And so my little design crystal floated up and went into my, met my personality crystal in the birthing pregnancy process, which by the way, is a whole thing. Um, and that formed my, you know, my body graph, my chart, my experience, my life, my unconscious and conscious, like whole thing. Um, so within the earth is the massive design crystal bundle of the earth that we are tiny, you know, pieces of. Um, so, and then also every cell in our body has a design crystal. So that's, you know, and that kind of, we talked about that a little bit in like the inanimate objects, plants, animals, you know, insects class. So definitely can kind of tie back and, and watch that again, if you feel called. When a being dies, the personality crystal leaves the body and the design crystal goes down to the mantle. So just right there, you know, when the death and dying, when the Bardo process is happening, whether the Bardo process is allowed or not, whether they have a very quick sudden death or they're allowed this Bardo process, which we'll get into the details of that a little bit, the personality crystal and the design crystal separate. So, you know, you, the design crystal immediately, as soon as the biological death happens, goes back down into the, it's like going down and then another one's coming up at the same time into another life, right? So, so that's kind of the flow of that design crystal. The, the biological death, boom, design crystal's gone personality crystals like oh crap what just happened and it kind of floats there for a while until and that's why it needs this you know ideally this bardo process allows it to kind of or there's like you know potentially confusion and kind of like there's this literally three phase process that the personality crystal goes through to be able to make it back up to its personality crystal consciousness bundle like godhead bundle right so um so just to kind of like, even just name that, like, doesn't that, it's like logical. It kind of makes sense. <laughs> um, anything before I continue here? Like, does anybody want to, yeah. Um, when you're saying like one's going down and one's coming up, are you saying within the same person or are you saying within the. Within like the flow of how the earth breathes. Okay. This is, kind of, I don't know if this is. The prana. The if this is a parallel or not, so just correct me. Um, but we have if this. I know. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> just correct me anyway with the gated crowd. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> um, we have this kind of game that we do in astrology where we look up, you know, when you were born, who was dying, like who was mm -hmm. leaving when you were coming in. And for me, it was uh, Steve McQueen was um, dying at I've my heard you say birth. that before. Yeah. And is that kind of, is there a, am I drawing an unnecessary parallel? Um, there's a lot, you know, Jonah Dempsey that we both yep. follow in human design. He's, he's a five, one generator and he's just 
Woo! He goes, he investigator out the wazoo, like very deep on a lot of stuff where I'm like, Ooh, like it's a little, whoa, but I still enjoy it. But he's got an open throat. So he kind of just whoa, 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 <laughs> with it. Um, but just to say, he has done a lot of deep dives and I've seen him post some different theories and I've seen it in other places where, you know, you'll see like, have you heard the, it's like almost like you'll see old, old pictures, but it looks just like Nicolas Cage or like, just like these people or whatever. And so it's almost like there's these timelines and different connection. So I can't, I don't know, like, no, human design doesn't say like whoever died on the, you know, cause I imagine there's many moving up and down at all times, obviously. Um, so, but it's an interesting thing. It could, it could be interesting to be like, who died on my birthday at this time, you know, and just kind of see if anything resonates. Is there anything to see? Do you want to pull that thread? Do you want to kind of go down that rabbit hole? You want to take the red pill? What do you want to do? <laughs> so I love that thought, but you know, I don't think we can necessarily know. Yeah. Shelly? Okay. I just had a thought. So I know, you know, either me or a, another medium can speak to um, those that have passed and they can contact them. Does that mean that they haven't returned and reincarnated? And like, if there are times when, oh, I just don't know where your grandmother is and maybe she's already returned. And I, I, okay. So just we're, a thought we're that get, I had that was like, oh, yeah. we all reincarnate, which I believe, but then like we're able to still talk to our right. past right. loved ones. Even my grandmother who was born in 1901, mm -hmm. is she not, is she still in this transition? Or like, this? Right. Right. So let's, let's perfect wow, segue to kind of the next um, concept. Cause we are going to talk about that. Cause it's actually <laughs> a little bit uh, mind blowing. And, and that's why I wanted to like pre discuss like with Tiff. Cause I was like, does this like totally throw all that out the window? Like, how does that? And she's like, no. So we'll, we'll tie in some of that. So I love that you kind of like presented that already. Let me, um, let me just kind of move us through. And then I think it's like the slide after this next one. So, okay. So this is something from Ra Uruhu form principle and the life and its potential genetically and everything else is established before the personality is called in. So the design crystal is actually running everything. And we've already identified that, like the unconscious is running everything. So, and that goes into a lot of things, but just to throw in Tiffany and I just talked yesterday about a bunch of this. And it's like, if you wanna know what's in your unconscious, like look in your life, look what, if like you birth what you believe, like you may not know that you believe it. You may think it's fact. You may think, well, this is the experience. It's it, This is what it is. And it's like, yeah, because you believe that and it's in your unconscious. So you're over and over and over, you're experiencing that same thing. So you're, you know, you've got to excavate. What do I believe? What's in my unconscious? What was I taught about this that I'm kind of like not seeing yet? You know, so that's a whole process and a layered <laughs> emergent thing. Um, but just to say that like the design crystal is really kind of running everything. Um, so all that's, you know, determined basically genetically and all that is established before the personality crystal even meets the design crystal before it's called in. When the personality is called in from one of those bundles the Godhead bundles, the personality crystal bundles that there's 16 of them around the wheel. One of those faces, one of those Godheads, and it comes into the body. Well, your person, he, he always does the little, Wah. okay. So while your personality crystal is never actually in the body, you'll see that the head center in the body graph sticks out of the diagram of the body. It's because the personality crystal doesn't even sit in the vehicle itself. It sits in the aura. So it's actually like kind of up here in a way. Right. Um, so when the personality crystal is called down from the Godhead bundle of consciousness, it's dragged down. Like it almost like, it, it's not like, oh, I'm ready to go in. <laughs> it's like, get in here. Like the, the design crystal is kind of like magnetizing it down. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> it's dragged down by the monopole, which sits in all of our G center defined or not magnetic monopole. So it's what holds the personality crystal and the design crystal together and keeps us on the line of geometry pulled to this form and then the arrogance of it that it assumes like that our mind that our personality assumes it's in charge of the whole damn thing like are you kidding me 
Like how unaware is that? But I mean, that's that's where humanity is. Like that's what we all are operating under. But it's just like, it's kind of funny when it's like a cosmic joke when you zoom out and go, really? I think I'm in charge of this? Like get real, you know? Um, so I just love that kind of reference here. So each of us is given a design crystal, which is like the form, the physical form. Design like is in the earth, right? It is the earth. So we're given this form model we're designed, you know, our red side on our chart, which calls in the personality crystal 88 days before birth. That's the like, like it, thir 30 days, like, uh, sorry, the, the last try before the last, right when the last trimester starts of birth. So that's also kind of a woo for me because it was because I'm like, oh, so the first six months is just design crystal forming. The It's just the unconscious physical form, genetic imprint forming. And then the last trimester is when the personality crystal is called in. So that's kind of a whole, you know, rabbit hole. We can also go down. Um, our minds become our deepest limitation. Like that's where we kind of like, you know, we don't surrender and all of that. Okay. Through this knowledge now, each and every one of us has the opportunity to return to source. And in this source, more mechanically and specifically speaking than just source, is our Godhead personality crystal bundle like of consciousness, which, you know, up in the universe, above the earth, however you want to kind of visualize that. Um, okay, I'll wait to read that because it looks like a specific death um, question. So let me let me talk a little bit, right, Tiff? Or do you, should we pause? Does anybody, okay. Let me know when, when we can fit that in. Um, so Bardo, D&D &D for 72 hours. So that's do not disturb for 72 hours once the biological death has occurred. So this is the information and then we'll kind of go into some of the nuances of it and my experience of it. So in order to return, in order for the Bardo process to happen, the body cannot be touched. And I'm saying touched, cannot be like mutilated in any, you know, pierced into, like invaded into, cremated, um, you know, autopsy or, uh, you know, what's the word embalmed, um, processed, uh, you know, whatever. We got it. We got it. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you. For 42 hours. Um, I'm sorry, 72 hours, non-invasive things in the body. Nothing for 72 hours. That's three days during that time, the personality crystal, which is like, Oh shit, what just happened? Like my body is gone. I'm very disoriented um goes through these three bardo stages through very precise experiences depending on your design it's like boom 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 and i'm going to show you that in a second and share what my mom what what a bardo expert kind of gave me like a, some tidbits on like what my mom i didn't get a reading or anything so i didn't go in deep, deep so i'll show you those in a moment if the body's disturbed if the body's cremated or buried within 24 hours the personality crystal will not go back to its source now, I just want to pause here because it's like what experiences we've had with loved ones and death and dying and that have transitioned. We didn't know this. We didn't know this. And that was the correct thing for them. We didn't know this. So we have to forgive ourselves for what we did not know. If you're in, instantly thinking, oh my God, I didn't uh, uh, like, you know, because that's a whole process with someone dying anyway. <laughs> you know, you have to move through these guilts and things that aren't yours but you have to process those. Um, we didn't know. So we have to forgive ourselves for what we did not know. And when we know better, we can do better. So that's, I just want to like, uh, I feel like I say that to myself many times a day about many things. So um, just naming that if anything's already like coming up. Okay. So if, if the, it doesn't get, if it doesn't, if the personality crystal doesn't go back to its source, like the whole consciousness suffers because the things that that being learned in their life, it didn't get to like go through this, this correction process of like, oh my God, I see my whole life. This is like, I see it all like without the, the mind, not self chatter, without the trauma imprinting, without the like distorted seeing of things. I see it all so clearly and cleanly. Oh my God. And it's this whole process that happens during that 72 hours. Um, then, you know, that, being who elevated that consciousness through that correct bardo process through the experiences of their life and their personality crystal 
that it doesn't go back to the whole consciousness field, which needed that evolutionary piece, you know? And I, even saying that it's almost like it wasn't meant to be, but it's like, there's an element that's also like, I mean, this is no choice, but this is why the earth field, like it is crowded with these not completely processed, you know, didn't get to complete their process, personality crystals. We'll talk about what that looks like in a moment. Okay, so this is the only opportunity in the whole life process to be only personality, right? To not, to have the consciousness beyond the body, which is kind of that Buddha, you know, um, consciousness, right? Which is why the Buddha sits, you know, under the tree for this many hours and days and months and whatever to, to access that consciousness. Um, to die correctly though, we need allies. Like we can't make this happen on our, on our own unless it just happens to be that we're out like in a field and like die and no one finds us for three days or something, you know, like that, that also could happen, but we really need, like humans need this information. You know, even if they're just like, like in my process I'll share, but it's like, I didn't need to go into, well, in Bardo and human design and like these processes in 72 hours and the personality and design, like, no, I just, to the green cremation company, I said, I don't want, due to our, Diff, our, our our beliefs we don't want the and I had already talked to my sister I shared all with my mom anyway I'll go into that we do not want you know anything cremated or anything like that for 72 hours can you do that and it was done so um all humans need this info those of us who know are custodians of the energy field of the earth so like now that we know we can be like I I can't explain it I just know hey I'm writing in my will I want three days you know, if someone else, it's three days. And so I'll, I'll talk to you about more specifics around that too. Okay, um, so I'm going to talk about if they don't incarnate, go ahead, or if they don't get the bar note, but. Before you go on, there's a little parallel too with um, some of the yoga philosophy, right? Like where you need allies when you're um, dying. And so some of the philosophy there is like you wear your you wear your malas, you wear your beads, and you're constantly saying the name of Krishna, right? And so as we're walking with the priests in India, they're constantly saying the name of God in many different forms. And so I asked, what's what's up with that? And the in a sense of humor, it's like, well, that way Krishna knows, like it's basically your dog tag. Like Krishna knows that you'll uh that you belong. That you're yeah, yeah, that you're coming here. And the, and so to constantly be speaking the name of God in the many forms is one version of dying well and so they they have a, a similar i guess parallel belief where um you don't want to die at, with a bad thought you know you want to watch your thoughts constantly and that's a form of also having allies <clears throat> so that's mm, all cool yeah and um you know a lot of you know cultures religions systems you know ancient and and even now have that like more more ancient more you know historical is like don't disturb the body for this amount of time anoint it do all these processes and so it did kind of honor this um but you know it's it's nuanced now because like what if you live in texas and it's 100 degrees what do you do with a body for three days you know it's kind of weird and so there's different approaches that i've uh heard of and then the, what i did so which was not that i was like i'm not in a place to sit with the body for three days because you need like dry ice and like all these wild things which I just I wasn't I I was like I cannot so I did my research ahead of time knowing that was not going to be what I could do um so just to say like you can get really extreme with it and I have stories of people that have done that or there's more of the practical which is kind of where I'm coming from um okay so thanks for throwing that in there Tiffany too that's it's it's very rim it's like definitely you know, connecting, like there's a Venn diagram with a lot of different systems that, that you can, um, you know, kind of access uh, around this death and dying process with the 72 hours. Okay. I'm going to go into, if they don't get the 72 hours. Okay. So in a minute, I'm going to tell, like, we can go into more of like what that 72 hours, like, I'll just give you a taste of what those phases that the personality crystal goes through that you can see specifically from the design, what it will go through from the time of death and the design. Um, but I want to touch on what Shelly was asking. So what if we're not allowed? What if we, we someone in our life didn't have the 72 hours, they were buried 24 hours later, they, they were incinerated in an accident, whatever, right? What does that mean? 
So if, you know, most, uh, most uh, many humans are not left alone for the process, right? Because of our modern culture and like, you know, process and get it out. Um, and their, their crystals are abandoned to this plane. So they're kind of stuck on, stuck on this plane. Um, these crystals join what, what in human design is called rogue bundles. Okay. So these rogue bundles are on earth, right? So the more people we have dying incorrectly, the more crowded it is. Like, it's not like it was a hundred years ago. There's like, there's a lot of population there. Like it's dense, you know? Um, and so these show up as ghosts, entities, and demons, and all the things in this ghosts, gods, entities, aliens, angels, and demons. And it depends on your design, what you're going to meet. So that's like what? right there. Okay. So just naming that that's a little wild and it's going to be my, maybe a little jarring, or you might be like, uh, uh, no, no, <laughs> or something. And that's okay. But this is just kind of, this is the information that you could, you know, put in the cauldron and let it simmer. See if, if you want to, you know, have it in there. But these numbers are not your profile. These are your motivation. These are your motivation. So if you're looking at that and you're thinking I'm a three, five, that's not the right way to no. be thinking about looking at the, these numbers. These numbers have to do with your motivation. Yeah. And I'll touch on that. Um, Sorry. No, no, no. That's a great question. Cause at first, you know, I've, I've, I've had that same, I'm like angels and ghosts, like, eh you know, cause I'm a one, three, so I don't know, but yeah. Okay. So we're surrounded by these. It's more and more crowded. Some rogue bundles are very large, large rogue bundles filter the neutrino ocean, which is all the information that is coming from the astrological, from the celestial bodies, from the planets, from, you know, stars, whatever, all the different things, um, that filter through the earth, you know, the consciousness field and the different rogue bundles, <laughs> it filters through to get to us. And that's what we are conditioned, you know, by, um, and the information. And also when we're born, it's the neutrino, the, the way the neutrinos were filtering through those planets and everything is how we got imprinted. So that's why you can, um, you can, that's why the human design system exists and neutrinos are like, they've been proven in science. Like it's a whole thing. Um, so, oh my God. It's really hard. Okay. So, um, and then we are all impacted from that. So the row bundles are distorted, you know, they're distortions. So we can see why there's just more and more distortion at, you know, as we kind of, we can all feel it in the current times, you know? Um, so row bundles do attach themselves to people and to places. Maybe even things, right? Maybe there's like, you know, a, whatever that like I don't even know what's a, a thing that I could even use like like in psychometry a, like a, like yeah like a watch okay. or anything right. in psychometry okay. that you're reading what's mm -hmm. psychometry mean when you're reading the energy of an object oh uh, okay yeah 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 okay that makes sense mm -hmm. um so if the personality crystal ends up in a rogue bundle they will never experience the pure consciousness of their godhead consciousness and it will not reincarnate um, there are angels, demons, ghosts, gods, entities, and aliens Yeah, exist as these rogue, rogue bundles. And each of those are like, I mean, e there's many of those. It's not like there's one angel rogue bundle. It's like, there's many angel rogue, rogue bundles and each is, you know, 10,000 to a couple million crystals. Not that we could measure that necessarily, but like, just to get the idea of like the, the different sizing that, that that could potentially be. And it's a consciousness, it's an entity. And Tiffany and I were talking about this because it's like she shared a um the video of the kid explaining what happens when we die and the energies and different things on I think it was on your group right Tiff that it's like a little short like a reel or whatever um and so it, it's he's kind of right you know <laughs> like it's kind of what we were like like he kind of described this a little bit you know um okay so rogue bundles are attracted to our motivation we attract them when we're in transference now we haven't done a class on motivation some of us have done readings and different things on our motivation. And that's the one you can see here. I mean, this, none of these, um, you know, images are the best that are like old human design images, but they're kind of the, they're not like modern is what I mean, but they're almost the best you can find. So for example, my motivation is innocence. So when I'm in transference, I might see ghosts 
right? Like when I'm in desire, they're going to be, you know, I might have experiences with ghosts and I have had experiences with ghosts, like, but not as much anymore. And now that this helps, it make sense. Cause it's like, you know, with our motivation, like i we, we recognize when we're in transference and you're never not in like you, it's not ever just, I'm only in innocence all the time. Like, no, it moves back and forth to desire to innocence. And those words, you know, have a lot under them. It's not just the meaning of desire or innocence. Um, but this isn't a class about motivation, but I just saying you could find an advanced chart of your stuff of your, of, sorry, of your design. And you can be like, Hmm, okay. Does that resonate? Hmm. So Tiffany is hope. So when she's in guilt, she's, likely to like those rope bundles the entity rope bundles would likely be drawn to tiff like she would probably connect with those and and you can access that in a okay i'll let you throw in some stuff later tiff um if you want so okay yeah before we move i want to show you like the different stages of bardo but what's coming up for this tiff do you want to add something with kind of your understanding or experience and mediumship and um, I don't, not yet. I don't think. Okay. Okay. But I mean, this is all great. Like I, you know, you can connect with, um, when you're connecting with spirit, when you're connecting oh, with, spirits, you yes. know, you're connecting with, um, potentially many personalities. And so there's this whole thing when you're connecting in mediumship, like, um, you know, you, you've got two male figures coming in and there's this whole like practice to discern, like, how do you pull out the one that the client wants? Well, it's kind of crazy. This is funny that I have all this on my desk. These are like screws. Okay. So if this is, if these are a bunch of souls and you come for a medium reading and you want to hear this one soul, but this is what I'm experiencing, right? Like it's like, uh, you know, so you start to try to pull something out and then go with that. And it, this increases its energy and then you hear more from it. Right. And so I, I don't know anything about rogue bundles, but what I do know about spirit is that there there's groups that can come. So sometimes when I'm talking to spirit or about spirit, sometimes it's a one-on-one -on -one situation, but more likely it's like a, a group situation. And that's why it's so easy for a medium. I mean, well, that's why in some cases it's, it's uh, easier to say like, oh, they crossed with, I can see them holding the hand of their spouse. I can see them with the white dog. I can see them because there is this kind of group energy around the, the whole experience, you know? Um, I think that's what we talked about yesterday. Well, what, what, what is reminding me too, from what you're saying that is, um, is, and I don't, I'm not a, like, like, I don't, I haven't gone deep on mediumship. So at all. So I don't, know what I'm talking about but with that but just something you were saying now and yesterday it's like there's a way that um in my mind I guess the way I picture it is like you can connect with these rogue bundles if mm -hmm. the, you know if you're trying to connect with a certain loved one that's passed on it they could be in a rogue bundle so there could be that experience mm -hmm. or they could be in a personality crystal bundle consciousness like because my mom I assume if I did it right from way, the way it felt to me and what's happened in my life since then, I assume she made it up to her Godhead bundle. And so, but I also feel that that can be accessed, whether it's all those crystal bundles and that Godhead somehow, you know, like, I don't exactly know the, the nuances of that, but. Well, I would just say that, yeah. you know, energy can't be created or destroyed. And so whether it went to this place or that place or this yes. place, or that place or or the, what are the Catholics call it that starts with a P purgatory or oh, like right. wherever, like whatever happened, the soul lives on in my opinion. And then it is accessible because it's information that's accessible, you know, and it's personality that's accessible. Form is not accessible at that point, you know, but yeah, that's why to me, it doesn't matter where they went or how they ended up or if it, if they were chanting Krishna at the end, or if you, they were incinerated. All of that doesn't even matter because the energy carries on somewhere. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that makes me think also, even the way that this, even the way that Ra, you know, received this information and like all that, there's interpretation on it, right? So we're interpreting these rogue bundles as like, oh, that must be a horrible experience. I feel so bad for like, maybe not. Maybe that's that's the evolution of the whole entire universe's like cells. Like that's, that's 
maybe it's a cool it. rogue bundle. There's, there's light <laughs> and dark, exactly. Or like, you know, that was their path. So I just want to name that, like, you know, I don't need to like, you know, start to feel like, oh, I need to interpret that in a certain way. And they're suffering in these rogue bundles. I think that's speculative. I don't think I think that that's it's part of the bigger thing that there's no mistakes, you know. So I know that we've even said like they're going to end up being like in this, um, you know, they won't complete their process. Perhaps that was, you know, the light and dark forces, you know, that there has to be like even number of those. So, you know, perhaps that was their path. But if we know this, then we can at least have our own correct dying process. If it's, if the opportunity is allowed for us to have that. Because if you get into a car crash and you're instantly dead, you don't get that. And nobody can control that. So we, so I'm of the like innocence and hope, Tiffany, of like, it's all designed perfectly, you know? Um, so I just want to name that like our interpretation of it is probably colored with <laughs> our, you know, our own experiences of being in society and conditioned and not self and trauma and whatever, right? Um, okay, Camden, is it assumed that the conditioning absorbed during the life is dropped even if a personality crystal joins a rope bundle? I know. Because then they're going to, the way that my friend describes it, who's the Tibetan Buddhist and knows human design, it's like, then you're going to end up carrying that trauma through and you're going to select a mom and a dad based on that that still needs to be you know processed so i wouldn't i would i mean my instinct of course we none of us know but yeah i like how you said is it assumed that's the right i would assume that the full deconditioning and realization and corrective process does not does not happen in the same way for the rogue bundles so then those distortions are filtering to us you know um so yeah, okay. So if if so much, if so, there may be there may not be much resistance while in a row bundle. Well, yeah, exactly. It may be like, oh, well, I'm not like this higher consciousness who went through this whole entire thing and brought my evolutionary thing up to the bigger consciousness evolution. It may just be like, this feels right. I'm in, I'm in this bundle, you know. And not to mention, they're not in form. They're in. It's a different, you know, consciousness kind of thing. But yeah, I love that. It's such a. Uh, like we could, you know, speculate all day on these different things. So I love that question. Okay. So let me share, um, just so you have a glimpse. These are the Bardo stages. This is such a dumb image. <laughs> it's so antiquated, but also I'm not going to recreate a whole thing right now. Okay. So, um, so 72 hours is the reference point from here in the Maya, right? From, from the Maya, which is like the illusion of this green water bottle and like this teacup and like all, you know, the physical, like what we see and what we think is going on, the illusion of the world, that's the Maya. Um, from the inside, time is a very different thing, right? So it's like 72 hours while someone is going through a dying process is, I mean, we can assume, does not feel like a 72 hours. Well, I'm on my 24th hour and like, this is where, you know, so we can't really know that, but it just to name that like, there's a different timeline in this 48 hours before death, there's a bit of bliss state. And I literally in preparing for this, I went back, ooh, it was, it brought up some things, but it like, I went back to those photos during like when my mom was in her, you know, several months long thing, but 48 hours before and kind of, you know, looked at, look, looked at those images. Cause I'm kind of a weirdo and took pictures of the whole, all the things, not the actual moment, but like pretty much right before and right after. Um, so at the moment of death, the line of the personality earth starts the sequence in Bar Bardo. So if you look at your chart, okay, so remember we, we said the personality earth determines your Godhead. I mean, sorry, the personality sun determines your Godhead where you are not on the rave mandala. Personality earth, your design, right? I'm sorry, your personality earth, right? Like, so that makes sense. Like, it's almost like what's connected to the earth as you leave the earth in the, in form, the line of that. So I'm a line one in my personality earth. The line of that is what determines your Bardo sequence. So for example, line one, 
I would start at time, then I would go to surrender, then I would go to chaos. And chaos isn't like, I don't know, I'm like it's like chaos where you're like, oh wow, you're you're just in it. You're not like it's a different experience. So I just want to name that because I in my mind I was like, my mom went through chaos when she, you know, and it's like, is it not not like that? Um so the six different sequences take place sometime in the 72 hours. So that's what we can't know. We need it to be 72 hours. It could take somebody 24 hours. So that's the other thing. It's like, we just can't really know that 72 definitely encompasses the process. It, it, according to the human design knowledge that was given, okay, that was shared. Um, so I can't really speak to a lot of this kind of stuff. I'm not a, a Bardo reader or any of that. But just knowing, you know, my mom was a line one person out of the earth. I no, she was a, a line five, I think. Wait, sorry, personality earth. I know this was her system. So I wonder almost if that's designer. Hmm. Okay, well, I don't know that it really matters, but I was given my mom's Bardo sequence from someone from a reflector that has been in human design a long time. So, um, okay. So I wanted to share my experience with my mom. Um, so she was a five one emotional manifesting generator. And this was her like in the eighties, she was super cute. Um, so she died August 11th, 2021 at 741. Oh my God, my typos in Austin. Okay. Um, so her, her Bardo stages were time, surrender, and chaos. It must be the design earth line because she was a five one. Um, so her Bardo stages were time, surrender, and chaos, given the, you know, here, time, surrender, chaos. So it's got to be design earth there. Look, I'll just um, I'm just gonna change this really quick to design earth so we can all just visually see it. <laughs> okay. Um, so And when the reflector shared, he kind of just was like, oh, here's this, her Bardo stages were time, one, two, three times surrender chaos. And um, and so I, I was like, I don't know what that means at all, but he kind of shared some different quotes about it. And so um, I could definitely share those, but it's basically like the time when is like, there's no time, you know, it's not the 72 hours. It's more like it can be confusing because you can't find like your marker um, like the, cause you're not in a form. So it's not like, Oh, here's my compass. Like here I am. This is what it is. It's like, uh, like there's a little bit of a time disorientation, uh, is how we would interpret it in our human experience. And then surrender was, um, let's see, enter the magic of the light. The second line surrender in the life is here to be called. It goes through the whole life waiting for the call all kinds of calls, right? But there's only one side of the mirror. When you step across to the other side, the surrender is one of those great, wonderful cosmic vacations, if there ever was one. It's swinging on the hammock in the glory of the light. Everything is let go. All the burdens are gone. Everything drifts away. It's the most peaceful of the Bardo states. As a matter of fact, it's so peaceful. Like it's so perfect that it can't last, right? Like it's just like, oh, there's like this moment of like, I'm waiting for the call, but like, oh, I'm in this kind of, in sort of a, you know, I love that, like swinging on the hammock in the glory of the light, you know, just kind of like, oh, I'm like, oh, that really, I love that imagery. Um, and then chaos. Okay. So you, when you step through the mirror, you enter into the Bardo keynote chaos, and there's kind of an intense, unbelievable confusion. Now, of course, that's our human, like interpretation and using that word confusion. It's very fast. The three is discovery. So it might seem like, okay, this is the third phase, but like to me, this phase felt, I could feel this phase. Like I could feel the corrective process happening. So the three wants to break through, not just the sky, it wants to dig inside the gears and see the mechanism itself. But the vehicle is a blessing, lest we forget. It's the blessing of the vehicle that the vehicle provides us with a frame in which we can tolerate the frequency of the totality. It's not chaos in the sense that there's something wrong. It's not chaos in the sense that there's no order, which is what we think of chaos. It's chaos because there's no way it seems to make anything of any of it. It's so fast. It's the most humbling bardo. 
as peaceful as the two is, the three is humbling. It opens up a deep, deep thing for the personality to recognize that it is in way over its head. There's no way it can make anything out of what all that is, nothing. So that's like the chaos piece. Um, and so that's kind of the process that, the, that this information would say that my mom went through in hers. And so if, like for me, I was touching her when she died and that's this picture, there's all four kids. This is her hand. This is, you can't see my brother's hand, but oops, it's, it's behind. Like there's, there's four hands. All of us were holding our hands when it happened. Um, all four kids. And so I also like all of us really, um, and because of my human de design experience experiment and where I've already come, where I had already come at that point, um, I really could feel it. And I knew it was happening. Then I also am put through this corrective process because she was allowed her Bardo. I was touching her. I've touched cognition. I, I mean, I don't know if that's required or not. I don't, I don't feel that it is because the other experiences that I've heard, which I'll share in a moment. So I shared this with her. I took the Bardo classes that I had access to. I took notes. I basically had this information. I shared it with her. I talked to her about it. She knew her design. Like I'd met human design two years before that. So I had been sharing with her and she was like, oh my gosh, but I was also not as great as at explaining it and all that too, but she got it. Um, and we always talked about that kind of, you know, esoteric metaphysical, like all those things. Um, and so then I shared this with her. I shared my notes. I was like, can I do this Bardo thing? Like, I want to honor your process. I want you to go through like your Bardo process. If I, if we have a choice and she read it, she was emotional. So I sent it to her and like, it was weeks before I heard again. Meanwhile, she's in this kind of, I mean, it was like a six month kind of dying process, like from the moment it started till she was, she, till she transitioned. It was about six months. So at some point in there, she finally got back to me. I was like, I don't know about this stuff, Leisha. Like, but go ahead. I won't care because I'll be like, I'll be dead. I don't think I'll care, which is the same thing Ra's mom said to him. And he was like, kind of snickered. It's like a cosmic joke. Like you'll care, but you don't have to know that now. So I did, um, yeah, I did a green cremation. I researched with one of my human design teachers who had lost both of her parents. I separately reached out to her, got all the details. She sh shared with me a cremation agency. I researched in Austin and found the green cremation society or whatever it was. Did a whole bunch of like communicated with them. I let her know. I let the kids know, like the, the, sorry, the other siblings. Um, and in Texas, there's like a 10 day process where she was like in like cold storage or whatever they do, but like there was no mutilation of the body. And according to my other human design teacher, that's what she did with her parents. And so I believe that it did allow her her process. Um, yeah, and I was touching at her. So a sense of her still there hovering like the personality crystal. And I could feel that. I was almost like, you're there, mom. And like, that fits in with, it doesn't matter what you believe. We all, we all gave it a little time before we like called the services to come and declare her, you know, time of death and all of that. And I could feel the correction process and I still can like it, like there's a correction process when you die, essentially, that's like, oh my God, I see it all backwards, forwards, all the lives, like all the things, everything that happened with these people and whatever, boom, got it all like runs all the way through, you know? So I could feel that correction process. And I have had this theory that it's like literally given me that correction process as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's ongoing, rapid, and entire transformation. It continues now. It's deep, systematic, generations backwards and forwards, and it's beyond words. That's how it feels to me. It's like truly clean and clear, which I feel like human design does anyway, but it like shortcutted me is how it feels. Okay, I see the time is 1258. I've kind of <laughs> I have one more thing to share about the reflector, but you guys want to jump in or should I? Okay. It's kind of a, it looks like a lot, but I just want to share like my impression that my brother was that my brother underwent, underwent a process of correction, which aligns him perfectly on his trajectory in this particular life and death cycle. It seemed that whatever went wrong in his often troubled life was corrected. So he could truly leave complete and in peace and come back with a fresh start. 
sitting with my brother during her bar his bardo time, I became not aware, not only aware of the correction that took place in him, as I shared in the previous post, a tangible correction also took place in me, a kind of fine tuning in my alignment with the whole. This process happened in a sometimes very energetic way. I would burst into tears or cry bitterly, um, followed by clicking into a deeper place of interconnectedness and strength from where I would be lifted up into a limitless state of bliss, transcending all material boundaries. So much would shift and click rapidly, and I came out of the extraordinary experience cleansed, refreshed, refreshed, renewed, as if having undergone a kind of surgical rebirth, which cut off the unnecessary luggage I'm still trying to hold on to, and rooted, rooted me firmly in my present life in the here and now. So liberating an experience, so grateful for it to have happened, and that, that is how I feel, honestly, now. Like, it's truly like I can talk about my mom and not cry, even though it is, it touches, you know, something deep in me. Not that it, that's a sign of anything, but I'm just saying like the grief is beautiful. It's not a grief in the same way that I see grief in people that have lost their loved ones that don't know this. They don't know how to process. Like we don't know that as humans, humans, you know, it gave me the clue that the best way to go through the grief of losing a beloved one is to be able to sit with them for the three days of Varda, which I didn't sit with, but which accelerates the process of grief while at the same time being able to participate in the journey of the beloved person from here to there, instead of being cut off and denied this most important part of their dying process, which actually seemed like a birth, really. And that truly, it feels like that. And to understand not mentally, but existentially, that death is not the end, but the culmination of a particular life's journey of our soul, experiencing consciousness in form in so many different ways again and again, and death offers an often badly needed and welcomed rest. And who knows what other goodies in between those travels on planet Earth. My brother's sequence was four, five, six, and I got to experience along with him. So good. Sadly, I know many people have lost a loved one and remain stuck in the pain of missing and thus missing the possible transformation his or her death offered to them. And so that, that honestly is, that's how I feel. It's almost like, I don't know that I could have gotten, I would have had the same experience with if my mom was still here you know, because that was holding certain energies and patterns in place, honestly. So it was like a gift, even though I would never be like, oh, I want, you know, would have wanted that at 70 for my mom, you know, but it's truly transformational. And do you think about the, how, do you think the correction process can happen if you lose a loved one, but don't learn about the loss for some time? I do. I think that this can still, I think that it can still be accessed whether you spend time with them or not, or with them when they die or not, don't know about it or not. Like, if you know this, I think, I mean, please tell us in your experience, if you're thinking of someone particularly and you sit with it for a while and then you're like, wow, I'm actually seeing this differently now and feeling a lot of things. You could look up their design, you could look up their time of death and kind of refer to the Bardo stages and just see if it kind of, you know, if it resonates. So I always like to end with some practical things, what to do with this. Um, this is an image from Ghana's, uh, the culture in Ghana called Sankofa. And it means go back and get it. So anything in your past, like that you have trauma patterns now, which is 100% of humans, unless they've gone through a lot of, I mean, I would say 99% of humans. Um, you can reflect on the, like go back and get the thing that hurt you and see what gifts are there. How can it be alchemized? How can it be taken out of your personal story? And like, oh, this is my oversoul chose this exact thing. You know, no one could have done anything differently. Re you can reflect on the Bardo process, your own correction since their death, if you've experienced someone, you know, dying. Go back and get it. So see how the bird is going back and getting the thing that is, that they're birthing. That's, it's the egg. Like, that's the unconscious. They're birthing that over and over and over. You're, we all are until we go back and get it. Not dwell in it. Go back and get it and see what gifts it had. Forgive yourself for what you did not know. Surrender to what is. Share with others about the 72. <laughs> Insert chicken or egg joke. Exactly. Share yourself. Share with others the 72 hour process. Like we don't have to go into all the stuff, but just like, hey, I learned we need 72 hours. Like I don't want to cremate. I don't want to do anything for three days. Like whatever. Let's figure it out. You know? Put it in your will, you know, let people know, like my family knows, like I want, let me just make it clear. In fact, I might go and send them another thing. Um, I want my three days. If I'm, if I'm given the, that option with how I die, 
allow others their bardo process. Contemplate your previous understanding of death and dying and loved ones who have passed on and your encounters related to your motivation in human design. And then of course you can explore all of this in human design sessions. Enjoy the ride because it ends. So I added the it ends for our specific October Bardo human design lounge. Okay, I I realize we're over time. So I just kind of want to check in. I have a, a little ending thing, quote thing, but I don't want to keep. No, that was awesome. Was doing. Thank you so much. That was so good. I like I I have heard you talk about the concepts, but the order that you put it in made it oh, made it good. more understandable and digestible for me. And so I feel like way better about it. So <laughs> I mean, not that I felt bad about it. I just, right. you know, I have my own like that's fits here with my experience or like, you know, it's a Tetris, but yeah. 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 Thank you. That's great. Does anyone have anything you want to? I kind of didn't watch the chat the whole time that I know Tiff was like on that. Okay, well, I will end us with, oh, Nadine, okay. were you going to say something? Yeah. Well, um, so if somebody's disturbed in that 72 hour process beforehand or af um, after, I mean, between um, the 72 hours between burial or cremation, if someone is disturbed and they're so then their crystals become ground or or rogue you call it rogue rogue yeah rogue. so then their design rogue. crystal still goes back to earth but personality crystal goes to the rogue bundles unless they, they did it in faster than 72 hours because mm. mm -hmm. so that's um, also like that's an unknown because maybe some do it in 48 hours depending on their sequence in life well and if somebody is laying in bed for like two weeks or a month they might have already processed some of their right and that was my mom's process too like she was um, like out of it so yeah i do believe that um so is there some way to get the rogue crystals to drift up to the personality area again or not I mean, to like, what I've oh, understood. Or no, they're just no. how do you get the road crystals connected again? Does it just become another entity eventually? I mean, do they get reincarnated? Do they attach back to their personality and reincarnate? Or is the personality always separate from those crystals? So they've lost those crystals? Well, or? they're they're in with the other personality crystals in that rogue bundle. However, like I will say that Ra was Ra Uruhu, that all this information, like was, you know, in my opinion, there was limitations because of his design oh. and what his role with the human design system to get it out, you know, get it universalized impact, like all his manifestor things. But like, I don't think he had knowledge of like all the different dimensions of be like of existence and time and like some of the things that like, you know, the multidimensional metaphysical things. Like he was more of like the practice, like none of that shit's real. This is the real. So not that I'm not saying that his perspective was not absolutely necessary and correct. Yeah. But to me, I, I don't know what those possibilities are, but I, in my experience with expanding beyond just the mechanical, logical human design, like there's a lot more that supports that, but it's the foundation. I could see yeah. that there could be some possibility there I mean being who I am I definitely you know and and if there's not like first of all we can't know right but second if there's not then honoring our loved ones that maybe didn't get the time you know or whatever like we didn't know or they died suddenly by like hey what you know what messages do you have like accessing them through all of these kind of higher consciousness frames to me is yeah. would allow them to fulfill you know the role that they are that they were in or that they are now in you know so it and then maybe that somehow allows them to release and go back like i don't think raw can know and i don't think we can there might so be I, somebody I else who will channel that information exactly yes i think that's it's and, and i know somebody who has a um who's channeled a certain system for astrology and he's downloading some new information after 18 years. He always says it's interesting yeah. because it's the nodal. It, 
it's the nodal change when he launched his astrology, focusing only on astrology 18 years ago, it was right around the nodal change. Right, course, but anyway, yeah. that's astrology. So human design, it might be Similar, that though. there right. will be more information as we- Well, great more, point. Yeah. Because in yeah. 2027, there's a huge global cycle change and it's similar to what you're describing where maybe this, all this awareness will come in and we'll be like, oh my God, now we all, all these people all of a sudden understand like how we can release these souls, you know, if they need releasing, we're assuming they need releasing, well, you know, also, like, right. So if I may, I, um, so, um, like cool Tiffany to, and yeah. you have had chances with ghosts or entities, um, and what I feel about that is you can take what you've just presented. I, I can take, Leisha, what you've presented and then fill in the gaps for myself for what fits with what those mm. grown crystals do or how they dissipate or do they ever combine for good as opposed for like bad entities that scare us. Um, but but my understanding of the um, Bardo state, the between lives state, I can take what you've just presented exactly. and fill yes. in. Um, oh, yeah, and I yes, yeah. and that's the whole point of that human design. Like the whole point is the individuation. Like this is the information. Now you take it with who you are, who your filter, and what your conscious is, and your godhead, and your experience. Now you may have another, a whole other understanding another, and application. And, and another point, and I should could have just put it in the chat or but another question is so this is where we're talking about so death doulas the right the have right. death doulas people who were formally taking care of a person's passage and i'm i'm jewish and we have sitting we have a formalized way of sitting after the death but but also in attending to some the ill the sick the dying we're supposed to that's in our our cultural and our community structure also is mm -hmm. um it's formalized um so that's another thing being a death doula maybe we'll have more of that um yeah yeah yep. so. and that's tiffany and i've talked a lot about that since we both lost mm -hmm. our moms and kind of we're both in the quarter of mutation which is like get comfortable with death you know, and so well, we've been like, why do people not talk about sex and death? Like, let's get into it, people. So I'm with you on that. Like, I yeah, why aren't we in that. Judaism? We are comfortable with death. It's a part of the life cycle. Absolutely. And our, our Old Testament stories are all based on the cycle of nature. A lot of people don't that don't realize, you know, it's not just crazy holidays that other people don't understand it's about the life it's about the yearly cycle and life is a cycle too um yeah thanks um it's interesting Thank you so much to, yeah i love the points you're bringing up like makes me go Ooh, oh but in understand. our society we really need to start taking care of death and and geriatric problems people getting closer to death a lot of totally. people are getting old yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i'll mute i'm sorry for us. taking no worries please thank you okay tiff you disappeared but i'll if but we can um end on this concept um you get the bardo that's there for you personality gets this beautiful kiss off at the end of bardo you see it all you get it right this is the only time in existence not controlled by the form. The personality will have this full sense of self, of itself, like whole. Dying becomes something to look forward to. It's and which is truly how I feel. Not in a like I'm ready to die, but like in a I'm not afraid. It's bound to be really interesting, and I want to see what that is. This is what Ross says, and he did die in 2011. I want to have that journey because it's the end of my process, and the moment I'm in that bardo, it will be clear to me in what in what we in what that experience is, that it's all been okay. It's all been correct. And I can leave this plane in grace and honor. It's the way to go. So just saying like, anyone educated in this information is privileged. We are privileged. We're the lucky ones to know this. And we really earn that, that return. That return means a lot to consciousness. So I think I wanted to kind of end with that, like, magical touch point of this whole process.
So, okay. I think we are ending. Tiffany, do you want to pop in? You might be available to. Oh, I just maybe. had to. I just oh, had sorry. to do a bio break. Sorry. No, oh, I no. do. I do need to You're close. Like, I'm going. Okay. <laughs> I'm gotta go. No, we do. We need to need to close. But if anybody has questions for Alicia, we could do emails later. And thank you so much. This is so helpful and so beautiful. And not to uh, do a third line ending here, but you have you really earned that rerun. You were, you said return. I don't know why it ended up with, I'm such a perfectionist. This had so many. It's hilarious <laughs> though. You earned that rerun. Re yeah. So it's good. actually hilarious. Yes. <laughs> good joke. <laughs> um, and I'll get, Lucy will send this replay to everybody. Our, uh, I'd love to send the slides to everybody too, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I, think, I think, I think like, I want to go back and see the, um, the sequences a couple of yeah. things i did a screenshot so okay guys um thank okay. you lisa this is so thank powerful you so much. have a great uh october and i'll see anybody who's registered saturday for the eclipse class okay bye guys love you bye. thank you